G'day YouTubers and welcome back to Nuclearies with the highly requested reactor core shutdown tutorial. Today I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do, everything you need to know as well as the reasons why you would need to perform this maintenance shutdown, as well as how to turn everything off so you have the ability to fix everything back up to spanky new, as well as resetting everything ready and waiting so you could go back to the previous episode and just start on up from there nice and easy. So at the moment, I currently have loop two and loop three running while loop one I've just installed in this current save just for you and it is not producing power in any way, shape or form. So loop two and loop three are the only ones we have to dissipate all our heat and I'm going to request to do this maintenance shutdown right now close to 2400 hours or midnight for the fact that it would be the least amount of demand of power from the city they would be requiring. So right now would be the lowest time of the day that they would be wanting a high demand of power. So it's a better chance that they would give us an approval just like so to cease operations at 2200 hours. So what that means, at 2100 hours, so an hour before the time they confirm, it's going to show up here saying shutting down. At that time, you no longer have to worry about outputting any power whatsoever to the grid, as you won't be paid in royalty points from that point onwards. So since we just got the approval just now, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hit the scram button on the control panel. So this is going to increase all those rods to 100% to reduce the reactivity to ultimately lower this temperature in our core as fast and as safely as we possibly can. It's going to obviously reduce your vessel pressure a little bit over time and you want this to stay in the green while you're dropping the temperature at least until it gets below 100 degrees. From there it's a little bit different and I'll show you absolutely everything you need to know so don't worry. The reasons why I'm doing this actual maintenance shutdown today is I've gotten my AO to do a preventative maintenance analysis, which I'll do an updated one right now, which eventually comes back with a maintenance report that if I scroll down, I notice my cooling circuits wear is at 88%. So that means the only pump I have available in my condenser, its wear is at 88% and rising to the point I don't think it'll last the next 24 hours. So for me to be able to repair it, I'll show you, I need to be able to shut this pump down completely and power it off for me to be able to pay AO to repair this as it's the easiest option and I'll show you so don't worry. So currently we're dropping down the temperature, we're dropping down the pressure a little bit but that's fine, let's speed up the time a little bit and the best suggestion I could say is produce as much power as you possibly can and control your output of the power to the grid using these turbine bypass valves. So that's gonna bypass the steam around the turbine to go straight to the condenser instead of being turned into more power. So that's just allowing me to do that nice and easy and control how much power I'm outputting. So we're getting close to the 2100 hour mark and I don't need to worry about how much power I am outputting to the grid. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here as I'm going to increase all of these up to 100%. So I'm not outputting any power whatsoever. And I'm going to go ahead and turn those resistors I have available off. So everything on this panel is open. I'm not going to produce power anymore. Your batteries would normally automatically turn on, but I'm going to manually start one of my generators for the fact that I have an objective that I can't use my emergency batteries throughout the day. So I have manually turned this on to charge so my batteries cannot be in use. Normally in your save, and you don't have to worry about that objective, this would be in automatic. Your turbines would no longer be producing power. All your lights will turn off, but your batteries will turn on, giving time to your generator to turn on and power up to produce power, so all the lights will be turning back on, and you'll still get in control of everything here, as well as access to any of the pumps you have around the facility, so make sure that happens. So now that we're all ready, we're not outputting any more power to the grid, 
let's go ahead and turn everything up to 100%. So as you can see, this is on 100, it's over capacitizing. That's fine. Let's just go ahead and turn this one off. I'm gonna look away because there's a small bug at the moment. And I'm gonna turn the other loop off just like so. Don't worry, that little bug where it flicks you back is being fixed and is known at the present moment. So that's stopping water flow into these generators. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to turn... Oh, no, I'm not going to turn that off. I'm going to turn this all the way up to 100. So I'm drawing as much heat as I possibly can away from the core over to my generator, which obviously is going to create more steam and is going to drop this value. So just keep an eye on it. So what I'd probably do is I'd drop this on medium and then I'd probably turn these back on again when it gets a little bit too low. So I'll just turn those back on and you can always drop these after the fact by opening valves or increasing it. So don't worry, I will show you also in this episode. So that's just our maintenance report, our updated one, and it is at 89% currently. So it's gotten even worse from my last maintenance report. So at the moment, we've got our 100% on our primary coolant system. And this number here just takes an average of whatever's available here, whether it is on or not. So they are both currently at 100. These are already at 50. So these are still over capacitizing just a little bit. That's perfectly fine. We, we may want to bring up pump three just a little bit, just so it doesn't drop that number too low, but we'll keep an eye on it. Let's come over here and let's crank this up to 100 to get rid of it as much heat as we possibly can. So that's perfectly good. We can just leave that as is for now. And what we need to do at the moment, I'm even on day five, technically, you start at day zero. My core does not need to be changed out or replaced in any way, shape or form. And technically you wouldn't need to do this, but I'm going to show you anyway. What you'd need to do to be able to extract the core and all that sorts of jazz is you need to come over to the primary coolant system, come over to the core outer vessel and remove. What that's going to do is that it's going to drop this gauge right here. As you can see very slowly, everything takes time. Don't worry about that objective. That's going to ultimately drop this water right here. That's going to allow us to actually shut the reactor down completely and so it will guarantee no heat is generated whatsoever. So now that that's all done, we are now below 100 degrees. That's absolutely fantastic. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to open this vent valve on our pressurizer as well as this cooling valve. So that's going to get rid of all the pressure in there. No problemo. And let's just leave that as is. That's no problems. So let's come back over here, make sure everything's going as is. We're removing the water out of our core vessel. We can now come over here and we can put this into shutdown mode, which just allows us to either insert or extract that fuel using this fuel residue panel. So if you saw that last episode, we shut it down. Let's turn it back on again for the fact that we need to use it to shut down completely. So I suggest do not turn any of your primary coolant systems off until you get this below 55 degrees and it is an, in a non-critical state. So we're not there just yet and I don't want to turn those off. At the moment, we're both at 5,000. So let's go ahead and turn this off. Quickly look away and like click away. Get rid of that little bug and let's just turn both of those off. That's no problem. We'll fix them in just a second where our outer vessel water or coolant is currently draining away nice and easy. It takes a little bit of time, but that's no problem. In the meantime, let's get these up to recommended values ready and waiting for when we need to start up. So to drop these two values, you need to come over to the valve controls over here. And on steam generator two and three, we need to open their valves ever so slightly. So let's just count out five. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, close. Same thing on the other one. That noise in the background is our reactor becoming non-critical as it just says there. That's why I stopped. Let's do the same on the other one. No, not that way. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. And that should open them about 50% of the way and it should drop these values down rather quickly. 
Doesn't matter if you drop them too fast because you're not really transferring any heat over to boil anything off because your reactor is now in a non-critical state. So that's awesome. That's no problem. Our pressurizer is off. Let's go ahead and just close these off no problem. Just like that so we don't have to worry about in the future. We have our reactor in the shutdown operational mode and we can come over here. Obviously we have it turned on and we can just extract it from the core. No, no, we can't. I did that on purpose so we could come over here and I can explain when that little error message comes up. So that flooded core, it means the outer vessel is not empty just yet, as you can probably see just there. And it will, it will be represented in this gauge just here. So we could probably skip just a little bit of time so that comes all the way down and we can continue on. But now that that's all good, let's go ahead and shut these valves off ASAP because they take time to shut. Evaporator 3 and Evaporator 2. No problem. They should close ever so fast. That's awesome. Let's come over here and see what they actually shut down to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually decrease this even further so you know what to do and how to fix it. So I'm going to reopen those valves and screw this up intentionally to show you what you could do to fix this problem and how to increase those levels. So I'll just go ahead and close that one off now since it's drained off a little bit. And I'll leave the other one as is so we can just deal with the one. So where are we? 3176. So this one here is just a little bit low. What you need to do is depending how low this is and how fast you want it to increase, make sure the valve is closed first and you're not losing any volume, obviously. You'll just want to turn its respective pump on. This is the one we want to turn on. So pump three. I'll look away quickly. And we just want to increase it by 25 percent so 25 liters a second every time it takes time to power up and power down and when this gets closer to what we want it we can just turn this pump three back off for when this valve is perfect so it might be a little bit over pressurized now because it takes time to power back down but you'll get it eventually at 3250 or close to that is perfectly fine as is ultimately you are pulling water out of your condenser to be put into these steam generators. So now this is a little bit low and I might wanna to top this up just a little bit. So I'm gonna load that up just a little bit by clicking that on, just while we wait a little bit longer for this to actually finally empty out. So it's nearly there. And when it gets to about one or say 0.5% or something like that, so about now-ish, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off just because everything does take time to power off. There we go, so that's now zero, that's awesome. Just checking our condenser level, that's also good, so I'm just gonna flick that off as well. So now, all of this should be fine as is, and you'd be up and ready to go. So our condenser is no longer needed, we can turn it off completely. Our temperature's below 55, and we're just about to extract it, so let's go ahead and extract it from the core like so. We get like a little animation just saying it's done. And we can now come over and turn off our primary coolant pumps because we don't need to transfer any more heat away from the reactor. It is now completely turned off as should everything should be. So let's just go through before we do any maintenance, which does do a massive time skip. And it may give you an audit at the same time, which I will explain as well. So we have our pump off, it's powering down as it is. Our pumps are off on our secondary. Our pumps are off on our primary coolant system. Our resistors are all off. Okay, so our bypasses, you can drop them all the way down to zero, but I won't do that now just to save a bit of time and you don't have to see me do it all the time. Our venting is all done and it's at 0% or it's at three at the moment. You could probably vent it a little bit more, but that's fine as is. What you'd need to do now is really quite simple is obviously with your recent maintenance report this one right here you'll go into select maintenance tasks and make sure everything is turned off that's why you can't do it now because it's not turned off completely so the cooling tower pump itself this one right here is not off entirely yet so let's just skip a little bit of time to get that done and to enable us to continue on with this maintenance. 
So we should just be able to do it. Awesome source. So let's slow that time back down again. And it now allows us to do so. So let's select everything we need to and pay AO to fix everything we need to do. So obviously now that gives us an audit of why did you need to shut down and they're gonna come and check and all that sorts of stuff. As well as now we have to wait, wait for this time lapse to come down. Remember everything and any pump or anything like that is open will still be running in the background. So just keep that in mind. I learned that the hard way when I had that remove outer core water coolant was still on. And when I came back from this screen, it was on fire. So that wasn't really good fun. So we're finally out of here. AO has finished all of the actual maintenance tasks and everything should be at 100% integrity and 0% wear. So that should be absolutely awesome there. Since we did that, we now have an audit and that's plenty of time for us to now get up and running shortly after obviously loading water in that outer core vessel because I don't need to change the core. I just wanna show you the little cool animation with the crane on how to do so. So with our fuel residue panel, let's tell our crane to put the current core in waste bin one. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll just race on over here and I'll press U to get rid of my HUD. The crane will fly on over, grab the core, pick it up. Just like so. This is such a cool animation there. It flies on over through that little hole in the wall to where it actually puts the spent fuel rods itself. So in my previous quick and dirty startup tutorial, I actually show you around the entire facility. So if you're curious to see where everything is and what everything does, go ahead and make sure you check that one out there. So after that's done, it's now emptied out the core. You've got no actual rod or fuel in there whatsoever. And every time you start up a new game, you do start with a spare fuel rod. I'll just wait for this crane to come back and reset itself to enable us to get that spare clean and new fuel rod in. So let's just quickly zip on over here and let's select fuel one that we have spare and set it. So that's obviously according to this right here. So the crane will just do the exact same thing. It will fly on over, grab that core, bring it on back, place it on in. You can then boop it on into the actual presser, pressure vessel itself after putting it into nominal as I explained in my in-depth tutorial and explanation video on YouTube as well, which I'll link at the end as well. So make sure you check that on out. You'd obviously now have the core ready and waiting. Let's go ahead and increase the water in that outer core vessel, just so we can get up and running, increase the pressure, create some power, some temperature and all that sorts of good jazz. So as always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe if you wanna see more of this sorts of stuff and stay sharp till next time as always. I love that animation, it's so cool, that crane. You can even manually control it as well in case you get like control rod malfunction, which is those things right there. Uh, really quite dangerous and really quite explosive. Have fun everyone and uh, stay sharp. Stay up.